Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we have a fun little afternoon project. We're going to build a QRP Guys Digital Power SWR meter with an internal dummy load. Now, this particular meter works up to 10 watts. The dummy load can handle a little bit more than that, and it works in the HF spectrum. Now, I've built several projects from QRP Guys in the past, and I've been very happy with their product quality and the quality of their kits and components, etc., and for a price point of $40, you really can't go wrong with something like this. What's nice about building something like this yourself is, is not only do you have an idea of how it's assembled, you're also building your skill set. Your kit is going to come in a small Ziploc bag. You know, dump all your components into a tray like I have here. Inventory your components. Print up your instructions, of course. After doing your inventory, one hint I will give you is, is for items like resistors, I find it easier for myself just to go ahead and mark the resistor values. If you want to use a muffin tin, then that's good for you also. Now, if you look on the other side here, we have the instructions. And this is just about all the instructions you need to assemble this outside of winding the transformer, which is the elephant in the room, and we're going to get to that first and foremost. So we're going to wind our transformer. We have some 26-gauge magnet wire, and we have a binocular ferrite core here. So we're going to wind our secondaries first. So in order to do that, we're going to need two 20-inch lengths of this 20 gauge or 26 gauge wire cut out. So go ahead and cut your two sections of wire. Now the way we're going to wind the secondaries in this particular transformer is using this binocular core and our two 20-inch pieces of 26 gauge enamel magnet wire. Go ahead and insert your wire through here leave some out at the end of course and then every time this wire passes through the center of this core it counts as one turn and you want to have 12 turns through the center you can count the wires on the outside and there should be 11 on the outside and that'll mean there's 12 on the inside so as we've done here just go ahead and start winding your transformer just like this and keep track of your turns and when you're finished with that side you should have something like this you should have 11 turns on the outside, 12 on the inside. And a little pro tip is, is when you're winding these things, is I use a small straw, like from a can of tuner spray or something of that nature. And it helps you keep things organized when you're winding your transformer. Now that you've completed this side here, go ahead and start the next side. When you're completed, you should have something like this. Now, these two ends here are going to be tied together, and they're going to go in one end of our printed circuit board and then our other two are going to cross over each other like this and then we're going to have to solder them through the board as shown here let's get our transformer ready to mount so i'm going to go ahead and cut to three quarters of an inch off of the end and then we're going to have to remove the enamel off the magnet wire after you've removed the enamel, just go ahead and flux and tin your wires. Now I'll take a small piece of insulation from our primary wire because we're not going to need that much. And with those wires are going to cross over, I will go ahead and insulate one of those wires. So when it crosses over, there's absolutely no way it's going to short against each other. Now let's go ahead and install our transformer. We're going to cross this side of the transformer. And it's going to go E and G. And then we're going to take these two and tie these together. And we're going to go through F. Now we need to do the primary side of our transformer. So taking the provided insulated wire. We're going to go through the transformer and bridge these. The only reason we're on the back side of the board here is so we can mock up our assembly and allow us to cut it on this side so it's going to make it a lot easier. So we'll take one of our primaries and we'll insert it through here and we'll make a bend in it. Now that we got our primary wires placed, we'll just go ahead and rotate it over and solder it in.
Well, congratulations. You just completed the most difficult part of this entire project. Now we can go ahead and populate the board with the rest of our components. Now that we've got our board populated with all of our small resistors, the only resistors left are the ones for the dummy load here. We're going to go ahead and install our diodes. Now that we've got our diodes done, we're going to do C1, C2, and C3. And these are your little capacitors. And that's these capacitors here. Now you may note on the board that there are slots for C5 and C6 but those components are not used in this particular application. And our last small component is going to be the only electrolytic capacitor that's in this kit. And this is polarized, of course. So if you look here at your board, inboard is going to be polarized to battery positive, and your negative, which is how this one is indexed, is going to be here. And the capacitor is meant to be installed and laid down. Let's go ahead and put our coin cell holder in. This is what powers our device. This end here is our positive, and again, all of the details are on the board for you. Makes it very easy. Just go ahead and place that in there and solder it in. Now we're going to add our display. There's six on six pins on top and five pins on the bottom. Next will be our IC socket, and you'll see you have like a little U here, and that indexes with pin one on the left hand side. And to round out our kit at the bottom, we have three switches. We have one momentary switch and two single pole double throw switches. Now that we've completed the bottom of the meter, we can go ahead and round out our dummy load section and the RF connectors. So we have a double pole double throw switch that's going to get installed right here. And then we're going to go ahead and build our dummy load. What we want to do is, is we want to have some kind of space between the board and these resistors. Because when this is in service, this is going to have quite a bit of heat on it when we're using the dummy load functionality of this particular device. So a simple coffee stirrer here is going to provide enough of a space off of the board to provide that airflow. So set it up just like this. Just go ahead, you've got your shim in here that's giving you that offset for these particular resistors. And now we can go ahead and solder everything together. Now that we've got our dummy load in place, go ahead and withdraw our shim. And now we have plenty of offset there. We can put our RF connectors in. And you can see on these connectors here, you have your center and your body, your connector here. And then these two are fixing posts and the fixing posts are gonna go on the outside. Well, now the soldering portion of this build is complete and you want to go over your board and make sure there's no solder bridges and make sure everything's trimmed up and it looks good. Then take a prep pad or whatever you want to use and clean off any flux residue. And the kit came with some little rubber feet and we'll go ahead and install the rubber feet in the places here where the standoffs would go. If you wanted to put this in a housing, you certainly can. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use it like this. Well, isn't that thing cute? Now it's time to install our chip. Now, as I said before, you have this little cut on the front of this IC holder, and that's going to correspond with this position of your IC. Well, now our chip's in place, and we're going to go ahead and take one of our own. The battery is not included, so we're going to take our battery, and we're going to go ahead and place it in our holder snap it in place now let's turn it on and see what happens up oh, lights up that's good news well now i've turned the light off we can actually see the display and we can actually test this and see just how well it works before we get started with the testing i wanted to describe the device in a little more detail now that we have it assembled overall weight of this device is 2.5 ounces the device's size is three and an eighth by three inches and four inches if you go from the very bottom of the board to the top of the BNC connector. The RF connectors are both BNC connectors. I believe they offer an SMA option if you choose that. The dummy load is a 50 ohm dummy load and it is rated for 12 watts. The device is powered by one CR2032 coin cell. To turn the device on, 
you have a power switch here and then you this second switch here shifts from RF power to SWR for measurement now you have this other switch here which is the momentary push switch and that's a quick check so you don't have to worry about leaving that switch on and depleting your battery just when you're executing a test sequence just keep this switch depressed the top switch allows you to take your RF and either deliver it to your dummy load or deliver it to this second RF connector for measuring either RF power into the load or SWR. One other dimension is the size of the board in relationship to the RF connector as mounted here and that is one half of an inch. And if you have the rubber feet on the bottom of it here like I do, it's just under three quarters of an inch. The first test we're going to perform is going to be an accuracy in measuring RF power output into a 50 ohm load. For our device, we're going to use its internal dummy load. For our reference meter, which is my BIRD 4411, we're going to be using its BIRD 50 ohm load. Our transmitter is my true SDX, which covers from 80 through 20 meters, so 20 meters is going to be the highest frequency tested in this test today. Our feed line is going to be the same between both devices and our adapter stack is going to be the same through both devices except for we're going to have to change to a BNC connector. And the feed line we're using is a small section of hard line. Another meter we're going to test against is this MFJ845 which I've done a video on in the past. And this is a digital meter that's self-powered by a couple of AAA batteries and we have a small demi load attached it for measuring power output accuracy. So this is how our test is going to run. I'm going to go ahead and transmit in the 80, 60, 40, 30, and 20 meter bands and I'm going to go ahead and write down the data. I'm not going to force you to sit through this entire test. I'm just going to go ahead and show you how it's going to run and give you an example of each particular meter we're testing. Like for example this is 80 meters and we're 4.9 watts on the bird meter. Now we're going to perform the test with the QRP guys meter and I've taken a set of business cards here and made a shield for it to allow you to be able to see the display in this light. And the QRP guys meter reads 5.02 watts. Now let's test our MFJ845 and again this is at 80 meters 3.8 watts and here are the results in our power accuracy test the bird meter is our reference meter this is the power output display of the true SDX this is the MFJ845 and this is the QRP guys and you can see the closest meter to our reference meter the bird meter is the QRP guys at plus 0.17 watts. So we're going to begin our SWR meter testing. We're, we're going to take all these different devices and we're going to basically check them against known loads and in doing so we'll be able to see what the measurement accuracy is. But before we start that we're going to go ahead and check those all these different loads with my rig expert. For example this is my two to one mismatch load I built and you can see it's two to one on the 40 meter band. So I'm gonna write that data down and I'm gonna discuss all this data when we discuss the other devices that we're testing. And you can see that what we're seeing on the true SDX and the reflected power on the bird Here's the results of our test. These are the load conditions the devices under test were subjected to. These are devices under test here. We use the Rig Expert as a reference in this particular example. And you can see that we've averaged the results. And then from that average, I've come up with a deviation from the reference. And you can see those here along the bottom. So if you were to grade these, the true SDX meter is actually quite accurate. And that's very important because 
the meter in the radio itself is what's going to tell the radio to fold back its power. So that's very important that that's accurate. Followed by our bird meter and then the QRP guys following that and then our MFJ 845 falling into last place. Now we're going to go ahead and test for insertion loss. Anytime you place anything into your antenna system it's going to demonstrate some kind of loss. So the first meter we're testing here is our bird meter. It's at 16 megahertz. Our next device under test is our QRP guys meter and you can see the demonstrated insertion loss here. And here's the insertion loss of our MFJ845. So in conclusion we discussed this kit and how it performs. It performs well. It's a good value. It's nice and lightweight. It was a lot of fun to build the kit and I enjoyed sharing it with you. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.